Hello, Tristan. Uh, welcome in to another edition of the Two for One Hoops podcast. Uh, today, I wanted to take a look at the Rising Stars Challenge with you and, and go over some of the, the candidates and let's uh, try and draft out the teams similar to the All Star Draft. How's that sound? Hey, Park. I'm I'm, I'm game. All right, cool. Um, and so, just wanted to make a quick note um, that we won't be seeing Lonzo Ball or Malcolm Brogdon uh, due to injuries, but Lonzo Ball is going to be returning in the first game after the All-Star break. So uh, that's good news for Lakers fans as, as he'll be back there on the court. Uh, so I'll give you the first pick here of the player pool for the Rising Stars draft. Uh, who would you like to take? Okay, let's see here. I think I'm going to have to go with Joel Embiid. Um, he's probably the most talented, and I'm not really worried about him missing back-to-backs. Um also, he's a Defensive Player of the Year candidate, so you can't go wrong with uh, Joel Embiid there. Definitely. Um, okay, with well, my second pick, um, looking at it, I'll probably go with Joel's teammate uh, on Philadelphia, Ben Simmons. He's been, been excellent this season, 16-7-7, seven and, seven, uh, and just been able to do a bunch of stuff on the floor that we, we haven't really seen. Uh, and so he's been spectacular to watch, and, and I think he's a – He's a good first pick for my squad, so uh, I'm going to go with Ben Simmons yeah. as the second overall pick. Rookie, rookie of the year as of right now? What do you think? You know, I, I think that there's maybe, maybe some other guys in the discussion. Uh, Donovan Mitchell definitely comes to mind for me. Um, but Ben Simmons, I would say, is the front runner. But there, there, there's going to be other guys to be heard from. Uh, Jason Tatum as well has had, a, had an excellent season, but Ben Simmons uh, is the front runner for me. Yeah. I agree. Okay, so you have Simmons one. I have Joel Embiid one. Um, all right, my next pick, I'm going with Jamal Murray um, on the Nuggets. He's been spectacular. Uh, he averaged about 10 points his first year, and now he's averaging over 16, uh, shooting eight, 38% from deep and 46% from the field. Um, God, he's still, on, he's still only 20 years old. Um, he's younger than some of the rookies this year. Uh, he's only 19 as a rookie, so Jamal Murray is a kind of combo guard, uh, and he's always fun to watch. I think he, you know, the blue arrow, people like him and his antics, and Canadians can stand up for him. So I'll, I'll roll with uh, Jamal Murray as my second pick. Yeah, definitely a big, big time leap from Jamal Murray this season. Uh, really, really great to see. Um, all right, I think with my next pick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pair Ben Simmons with, with. Uh, Fellow Rookie of the Year candidate, Donovan Mitchell. Uh, he can play this, the shooting guard for me. Uh, simply said, I mean, I, I love Donovan Mitchell. This guy, he's so fun to watch. He just kind of does it all um, for that offense. And, you know, but he is he is 21, um, which goes back to your point about Murray being, being just 20 years, 20 years old. So that is interesting, um, considering that Mitchell had more of a college career. But, all, all but it goes to show you. It goes to show you how important college is, and you know a lot of times getting that second and third year under your belt um, is, is really helpful uh, for your development in, in the NBA. Definitely, and for some of these guys that, that aren't one and done, you know, surefire, surefire guys. I mean, take take the extra year if it's necessary, and it seems to have really paid off for Donovan Mitchell. Um, you know, came in the Jazz are Jazz are on fire right now, ten game winning streak. So. Mitchell is right in the middle of it, and he's really had a fantastic season. Definitely, definitely a steal of the draft at 13. Uh, a lot of teams passed up on him, and, and I've even heard some discussions uh, from some Philly fans that that have suggested that maybe they'd rather have him than Fultz. I think that's a little, little out over the heels, but uh, definitely, I definitely know, a great I, season. You tell me, you tell me if you're Philly, you wouldn't trade uh, Fultz for Mitchell right now. If I was Philadelphia, you wouldn't trade Fultz for Mitchell straight up? I, I don't think I would. Okay, I would, just because I think Mitchell's kind of everything you want to see out of the guard. He's a two-way player. It's not like he's just a, you know playing well on offense. He was kind of drafted as a guy who could who was strong and, and, and could play good defense. And he's, he's showing that this year. Certainly. And that's, again. That's less of an indictment on Donovan Mitchell and more just, a, I think, a play into Markel Fultz's upside. Now, granted, we we don't know anything about what's happening over there, and that's a completely weird situation. But uh, nevertheless, for for the purposes of this Rising Stars Challenge draft, I think Donovan Mitchell is, is a perfect number four slot for me, and, and 
uh, rounds out my backcourt with Ben Simmons. Um, Fair enough. So you're up. You're up next. All right. Um, I'm gonna go with I can't get Lonzo Ball. Uh, not that I would, but I'll go with fellow uh, L.A. Laker Brandon Ingram. Um, he's kind of taking the steps that people thought he would. I know a lot of a lot of people were poo pooing him as the second pick last year early on, um, and he looked pretty anemic. He was skinny and couldn't really get to his spots, but he's shooting 39% from deep this year, um, averaging 16 points. He almost doubled his, his total points from last year, um, and he's playing major minutes for a, a Lakers team that's starting to improve. Um, also, I like he's been facilitating. He's, he's almost getting four assists a game, so I think Ingram – you know, he's still young and he's still skinny. He still needs to fill out his body, but he's another 20 year old sophomore that has a lot of upside and, and would, would be um, my third pick here. Yes, yeah, so he seems to be coming along. And you mentioned the playmaking. That's something I have noticed this season is is that he's been he's been making plays for his teammates a little bit more than than we saw in his rookie year. But like you mentioned, he's just so slender, uh, so slight a build. So we'll see how. How his body comes along. He's still very young and has a lot of lot of tools to like. So that's a good pick there uh, in Ingram. For me, my next pick, I'm gonna probably look. So I have two backcourt players. Um, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna go to the small forward. Uh, go with Jason Tatum. He uh, the third overall pick in 2017. Currently of the Boston Celtics. Um, Listen, I mean, 43% from three as a rookie. He's a starter on a on a contributing, um, you know, number one seed or number two seed out there in the East. Um, and so he, he's just been a great player, and I think he's really exceeded, you know, most people's expectations for what what he was. But he can he can score the ball, he can shoot it, and so he's he's a great great piece. And, and I think I'm I'm definitely going to go with him as my starting small forward. Yeah, I mean, Tatum has tailed off a little bit. I think he was shooting close to 50% from three earlier on. Um, so he's kind of hitting a little bit of that rookie wall maybe, but he's been a lot better on defense than I think they were, they were expecting. So Boston is, is obviously enamored with him and, and Jalen Brown, um, as they should be. So, yeah, I don't, I don't blame you for picking Tatum here. Yeah, and like you said, the rookie wall, his his, his uh, shot has, has started to drop at a little less of a rate than it was in the beginning of the season. And, and some people are saying that the inconsistencies, but, you know, it's still promising to see from him. And, and this one game, like you said with Embiid, you know, it's it's a one game over all-star break. So he should be out there lighting, lighting it up from the downtown. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll see that. Yeah. Um, yeah he's, been, he's been really good. Um, Okay, I think next, let's see. So right now we have Joel Embiid's off the board, Simmons is off the board, Jamal Murray's off the board, board uh, Donovan Mitchell, Vernon Ingram, and Tatum. So we each have three players. Um, so my fourth pick uh, would be Lowry Markkinen, I think. Um, the Bulls have kind of been a surprise team. They were playing well um, a couple weeks ago, and now they've tailed off. They really uh, struggled when Chris Dunn went down, but Markkinen has been really good. I think just because he's on the Bulls, he's not really getting a lot of love. But his numbers are almost similar to, to uh, rookie Porzingis' numbers, um, aside from the blocks. He's not really protecting the rim that well. But he's shooting 35% from from deep, um, and he's, he's averaging over 15 points and close to eight rebounds a game. Uh, and I'm just – I was impressed with his handle. Whenever I watched the um, – Whenever I watch the, the Bulls play, I'm, I'm always impressed with how mobile he is, and he's able to put the ball on the floor and, and finish really above the rim. So I'll take a seven-footer that can shoot uh, with my fourth pick. I, yeah, and, and with Markin, too, I, I like his release. Like you mentioned, I mean, he's a seven-footer, and, and, and so he's, he's capable of getting a shot off against a lot of people, and, and you mentioned that he's, he's, he's a good three-point shooter, very capable, and that's what he's known for coming out of college. That's pretty much all he's ever done. Uh, so Markin Markin is a good young piece, and, and I think the Bulls fans, rightfully so, should be should be thrilled that they got him. I mean, they, they did. yeah, they they almost are looking kind of like the Pacers scenario again. I mean, people every, every everyone got on them for uh, getting rid of Butler, but Dunn is playing a lot better, and, and the pick that they acquired um, Markin has been excellent, and Levine now is playing really well too. So I think. Um, I think the Bulls fans should be resting easy with their young core. 
Yeah, and and you combine that with with a first round pick this year, and, and all of a sudden, you know, maybe they have a developed things of something pretty promising there. Um, all right, let's see. For me, uh, I'm going to go with another another four, but uh, I'm going to go with Kyle Kuzma of the Lakers, six uh, nine. He's a rookie, taken with the 27th overall pick. Uh, Kuzma, he's, he's got a nice, nice game. People are really big fans of him, uh, down in LA. 15 points a game this season, 45% from the field, 36 from three. Uh, so he, he's definitely shown some signs and, uh, he, uh, he's a 22 year old. Um, uh, but other than that, Kyle Kuzma is a really, really young, nice and intriguing young player for the Lakers. And I think that he kind of, he makes sense with some of their other core players. Um, and so, I, I'm, I'm interested to see where where everything goes with the Lakers as far as uh, free agency and whatnot. But they're they're starting to build a nice young core. I mean, you took Brandon Ingram with the fifth pick in this, and now taking Kyle Kuzma at eight. So that's kind of a testament. And then Ball isn't playing, so it is a testament to the young guys that they got in there. For sure. Okay, yeah, I like Kuzma. He's been he's been playing well, and a lot of people were. Shocked, he he dropped as low as he did, but I don't think he was nearly as good of a shooter in college as actually he's been in in the uh, in pros. Okay, let's see who we got left. Um, okay, I see Jalen Brown, De'Aaron Fox. Um, all right, next uh, I'm I'm going with my boy Dennis Smith. Um, I remember watching Dennis Smith like one on one highlight tape about three years ago, um, and Steph Curry was watching the stands and he was. Uh, impressed, to say the least, with what Dennis Smith was doing. He was putting on a show um, virtually unguardable one-on-one because he's so fast and so strong, and he can elevate and really finish above the rim. Um, oh, my goodness. He, can he ever? Like, he has some some explosive dunks. My pick for, for uh, the dunk contest winner, too, by the way. I like Dennis yeah. Smith, and he's, he's exciting. What's impressive, too, is he'll be driving to the rim, and then he'll just, like, rise off at two feet, which, like, not very many guys do. A lot of guys are, you know, one-foot leapers, and they'll go in and jam like that. But Jenna Smith, he can just get up so fast. Yeah. Him and Donovan, Donovan Mitchell, too, has that has that capability as well. But yeah. Smith is They both kind of are similar. They just they hit the Westbrook button where they just jump up and, and, and elevate. Um, he's yeah, shooting below like, 40% from the field, and, and he's shooting, like, 32% from three, but – Granted, that Mavericks team is pretty terrible um, talent-wise. You know, I, I like their coach, but Harrison Barnes and Dirk and the Motley Bunch, you know, uh, Yogi Ferrell and a bunch of other guys, they don't, they're don't they not that talented, so he's kind of forced to do a lot. Certainly. Um, okay, let's see. So I have Simmons at the point, Donovan Mitchell at the two, Tatum at the three, Kuzma at the four. Looks like I need a five, ma'am. Um, I'm gonna go with. Boy, there are not many on this on these rosters. Um, I'm gonna go with Demontis Sabonis. Um, he was graduate. He was he was there while I was there. Um, he's he's a really really talented young guy, and it's great to see that he's come on uh, in his second year with Indiana. Um, you know, you mentioned him in your in your backup bigs article as one of the best backup bigs in the league. It's, it's hard not to argue why. I mean, 12, 12 points, eight rebounds this season in 25 minutes a game. His rebound rate is one of the best in the league. He just kind of inhales rebounds out there, and he's been really able to carve, carve a nice role, 52% from the field. So he's been very effective when he's been out there for the uh, Pacers this season. Yeah, he's, he has an 18-player uh, efficient efficiency rating, which obviously you can't go solely off of, but he's 21, and I know a lot of teams, uh, when his contract comes up, are going to be giving him a look. Um, they they still have Miles Turner, and he actually wasn't – Miles Turner isn't in this game, which is uh, – maybe maybe he was hurt when they were selecting it, selecting the team. Well, but, my, well, Miles Turner was, was t- uh, taken – yeah, he wasn't eligible for this. But uh, it's interesting for, for the Pacers. They're going to have a decision to make, what, you know, because I don't think that they can play Sabonis and Turner together, and I think they've experimented with that with some level of success and, and non-success. You know, there hasn't been a lot of conclusive evidence. But I think that they're going to have to make a decision because it doesn't seem like they can play together because 